Hello everyone, welcome back to another Calamity video, and in this video, I'm going to be defeating Calamitous, Leviathan, and also making a couple really good accessory upgrades. So yeah, let's get right into this video. So off camera, I made two accessory upgrades, those being the upgrade to the Master Ninja Gear, and also the upgrade to the Ankh Shield. Now the Ankh Shield's upgrade is called Asgard's Valor, it grants 8 defense, all the benefits of the Ankh Shield, 10% damage reduction while in liquid, plus 20 max life, and also gives a holy dash, which can be used to ramp enemies. I'm not sure if this dash is better than that of the Master Ninja Gear, but we'll have to find out and do some tests and all that stuff. Now the second accessory upgrade is the Master Ninja Gear's upgrade. It's called Status's Ninja Belt, and it gives the benefit of the Frog Leg and also the Master Ninja Gear. So it's a lesser upgrade than the Asgard's Valor, but it's still decent. So the first boss I'm going to defeat in this episode is going to be Calamitous. Now the summon for Calamitous is actually really cool because it's unconsumable, which is not, you know, the usual for boss summons. So yeah, let's just get right to this fight. Um, let's buff up and I guess summon our summons. Now these lasers are actually really loud. I'm not sure how loud they are for you, but for me I can like barely hear over them. So hopefully they're not that loud in the video. All right, let's spawn in Calamitous and get ready. I am all the way zoomed out, like checked already. I've never fought this boss before. I don't even know pretty much anything about this boss. The lasers actually looks like they split. Yeah, they, the lasers split. That's really weird. Okay. Alright, so I guess you, throughout the fight she just summons these random other eyes. So basically Calamitous is like Retinazer and she summons Spasmatism, weaker versions of him throughout the fight. If I was comparing them to the twins, which I am. Okay. Oh, we got a bunch of little like drones around Calamitous now, which is kind of cool actually. I kind of like that. Seems like they're pretty weak. Seems like Calamitous really doesn't do that much damage. I don't know if my gear is powerful compared to, you know, what I should be using for this fight. Like compared to the stage of the game that most people would fight her in. I think Calamitous is pre-Plantera, and I do have post-Plantera gear. Alright, in the chat it did say my the brothers have been reborn. So I guess the small eyes are brothers of Calamitous. Alright, well Calamitous only has 5,000 health left. Can I just defeat her and not worry about the brothers? Because the brothers are doing a lot of damage. Kind of hard to dodge because the dashes are very fast compared to most bosses that dash. Alright, I'm going to shift priorities to the brother, because he's doing a lot of damage. Boom. All the brothers are down. Oh shoot! Oh my gosh, I didn't actually think we were going to defeat her that fast. Okay, um, let's actually collect the lore, and then yeah, let's check out the loot. Okay, so I did clean out my inventory bit so I can better look at the loot. Um, let's read the lore first. Calamitous clone. Okay, so it's a clone. That means it's probably a clone of Supreme Calamitous, if I had to guess, just from the small bit of Calamity knowledge that I do have. You are indeed stronger than I thought, though the bloody inferno still lingers, observing your progress. The bloody inferno, I'm assuming, is Supreme Calamitous. Favorite this item to gain a boost to your minion slots, but at the cost of reduced max health. That's not useful to me, just because I'm not a summoner. I did get a broken hero sword from Calamitous, which I didn't really think is that necessary, but also it's just kind of weird to get that from a boss. I don't know, I'm not complaining. Let's open the treasure bag. Boom. 
All right, a cloaked void of calamity. Cursed reduces damage reduction by 10%. That's pretty bad. 15% increase to all damage. Now, I don't know if like a default Terraria player has natural damage reduction, but I don't think I don't have any accessories that boost damage reduction at all. So if I use this, do I only get 15% increased all damage? I might have to look into that because 15% increased all damage is insane. I got some S's of Chaos. I already have a bunch of that. Ashes of Calamity. Let's actually look at the recipes for that. I think this is good, if I'm not mistaken. Sigil of Calamitous. That's a mage weapon. There is this Fallen Paladin Sammer. Let's see how we craft this. Let's see, Core of Chaos, Ashes of Calamity, Opponent Chammer, and Paladin Sammer. Okay. We could make this, except for the Scoria Bars, which you can only get after Golem. Now what's this final? The Phantom Lance. That also needs Scoria Bars. So, these, what are they called? Ashes of Calamity are not that useful to us now. Alright, so we got the Lashes of Chaos. Let's try out this. I swear I already have a spell tome very similar to this. And the Animosity. Let's test this out. It's a ranged weapon. It's very slow. Basically just a sniper rifle. Um, right click to fire a burst of bullets. Alright, so it's a basically a sniper and a clockwork assault rifle. So it's pretty cool. So next I did want to do a solar eclipse. Because now that I defeated Plantera, I should be able to get the solar veils. Which can uh, get me the vampiric talisman, I believe it is. Which basically makes my rogue attacks have lifesteal, which is really good. But let's do that as soon as possible. Okay, so I summoned in a solar eclipse, and I just want to make sure that I can actually get solar veils. Because solar veils are the only thing that I really need from this event. Um, I'm not sure what they drop from. I think it might be psychos, but I don't know if they drop from other things as well. What is this? Defective sphere. And it's a rogue weapon. I wonder if this thing is good. Doesn't seem very good, but I don't know, we'll have to test it out. So I still haven't gotten any solar veils. That's really the only thing that I want. Okay, four solar veils. I'm not sure what that dropped from. I think it might have been from a Frankenstein, but I'm not sure. But now that I can get solar veils, I'll just play through this event and check in with you later. Okay, so let's make this vampiric talisman, mithril anvil. Here it is. All I need is the rogue emblem and 10 solar veils. Boom. Okay. Rogue projectiles give a life seal on crits. That's still really good because crits do happen quite often. And then 12% increased rogue damage. So it is a downgrade to the rogue emblem, but their life steal more than makes up for it in my opinion. Also, I did find out that these defective spears, spheres, not spears, do stack up to 5. And I found out that just two of them are way better than than one defective sphere. And it also does a ton of damage compared to, let's just say, the Terror Disc, for example. So I think I'm going to grind out the Solar Eclipse until I can get a stack of five of these. And then hopefully these will be better than both of these weapons. So I think what I want to do next is actually defeat Leviathan. Now, according to boss checklist, I have to kill an unknown entity in the ocean biome. So I guess I'm just going to go to the ocean and hang out until something happens. Okay, so you can see on my rare creature thing that it says question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay, there's that thing. That's what I need to kill to summon Leviathan, it looks like. Wait, this isn't... This isn't Leviathan. Okay, I guess I have to kill her first. She doesn't seem that strong. I don't know if this is a boss fight or a mini boss fight. But I'm not liking our chances here because if there's a mini boss fight before the fight, then I'm going to be starting Leviathan off with low HP, most likely. Well, that was kind of a bad adrenaline. At least this boss seems to be pretty easy. As far as boss fights go. Oh, she's going crazy. It's raining now. I don't know if this is part of the fight or not. Okay. I didn't really expect that. I thought we were going to get right into the um, Leviathan fight. But maybe I get some buffs. I actually summon in my summons. And we'll see what we can do with that. 
So it looks like off camera the drunk princess actually showed up, so I'm pretty sure she sells some good candles that we can place down in the arena to help us with this fight. Yeah, when placed nearby, player's defense blocks 5% more damage. That's good, I'll buy that. Uh, when placed nearby, enemies take 5% more damage. I'll buy that. Don't know what that does. Already got that. When placed nearby, players regenerate 0.4% of their maximum health per second. This regeneration is at full power even when moving and bypasses revengeance mode caps. Might as well buy that. Oh shoot, I didn't even realize how expensive these things were. Whatever. Weightless candle basically just buffs wings. Now let's see what all this other stuff is. Looks like these are all just consumables. I don't really want to mess with any of this. Alright, well we got these three candles, or, sorry, four candles. And hopefully this will give us a little bit of a boost that we need for this fight. So, I placed on all the candles and they're actually pretty good. I mean, I can definitely tell a difference with my flight time. And also they do, you know, span most of the ocean biome. They have more range than the water candle I also have placed down. So really, the whole boss fight I should be under the influence of these candles. Alright, let's buff up. Let's start another Leviathan fight. I really wish the Terror Disc could have more than three of them out at a time. Hopefully the actual Leviathan, Leviathan fight isn't that difficult. Okay. Alright, so uh, this, this guy's chunky. Seems if I... Okay. This is terrifying. I think I'm going to use the Terror Disc because the little boomerang projectiles that come off of it can actually hit the Leviathan many times because he's so big. Alright, pretty easy fight so far. Wait, the um, the mini boss that I was just fighting is also still here. The Leviathan gets summoned like midway through the mini boss fight. Okay, he can dash. That guy doesn't look like a dashing type, but... But I guess... Alright, Leviathan's at about half HP now. I'm still about full HP. Oh, I actually really like this fight. This is a very fun fight. I don't know if it's just because like the fight is fun, or just because I didn't expect Leviathan to be so big. Alright. Oh, I don't know if I should have done that. Alright, let's use one of these. I can destroy this mini-boss quickly, that would be nice. I don't know if I have to kill both the mini boss and Leviathan. So I think I'm just gonna focus on Leviathan. Okay, that did a lot of damage. Nothing I can't nothing a greater heal potion can't solve. I don't think the mini boss is actually really attacking that much. Alright, now she's dashing. I don't know if it's the candles that make such a huge difference in this fight, or if it's just like, I got lucky or something. Like, I don't know why I did so much worse in the last fight than this fight. Alright, so I killed the mini boss and the main boss. I think, is there a treasure bag down here too? There is, okay. Um, yeah, so let's so open up this treasure bag. Alright, now that was a pretty fun fight. Now let's check out the loot, and we'll start with the lore as always. Leviathan and... Anahita? I don't know how to pronounce the last one. 
An odd pair of creatures, one seeking companionship and the other seeking sustenance. Perhaps two genetic misfits outcast from their homes that found comfort in assisting one another. Bear this item to gain increased max health while wearing the aquatic heart and treasure detect while wearing this strange orb. I don't know what the strange orb is. It actually sounds familiar. I think I might have it. Is that, is that a light pet? I'm not sure. I think the strange orb is a light pet. Allows the young ocean spirit light pet to move normally while outside of liquids. However, if you're not submerged in liquids, you, you'll have decreased defense and damage reduction. That's not very good. Let's read the ocean. The ocean. Take care not to disturb the deep waters of this world. You may awaken something more terrifying than death itself. Bear with this item to prevent the mysterious water elemental from spawning. Um, that's not very useful either. I'd rather just not take up an inventory slot with that. Alright, so I got urgent stingers. I don't think these are very good. I think that's actually pre-hard mode. Leviathan trophy? That's pretty good. Um, all these shells and stuff that we always get from boss fights. I don't actually know what these do. They do a lot of damage, but like, I've never actually had a weapon that could use them, I don't think. I don't know, let's just open the treasure bag. Boom. Arcane Leviathan Umbergris. Equipable material. You leave behind poisonous seawater as you move. 75% increased movement speed, that's really good. 10% increased to all damage, that's pretty good. And 20 defense while submerged in liquid. Oh, we have to be submerged in liquid. Well, that could be really good if I would if I would want to like submerge myself in honey and just kind of like camp a boss. I mean, that could be good. If you are damaged while submerged in liquid, you will gain a damaging aura for a short time. That's also good. Being outside of liquid increases all damage by 5% and increases damage reduction by 5%. Alright, so there's no downsides to using this besides obviously taking up an accessory slot. That's actually really good. If I was gonna like sit in honey and just kind of camp a boss, like there's a strategy for the Moon Lord where you just sit in a box and honey with a bunch of regenerating, like um like heart lanterns and campfires, like those stuff, and also with the nurse, and you just use the solar eruption to kill it while inside the box. If I was gonna do something like that, then I could use this accessory. Bottomless water bucket and the super absorbent sponge. If I got both. That's really good. Sonar potion? Nice. Don't really need that. I don't really fish. The Brachic Flask. 119 rogue damage. Whoa. This is pretty cool. Let's see the uh, stealth attack. Okay, so the stealth attack was that first attack that had like a, a giant beacon going up in the air. Gastric Belcher Staff. That's kind of cool. I think I might... I don't know if these are better than the lasers that I have. Probably. They're almost definitely better, actually. They do more damage, and they're just higher tier. Like, I got this from... I actually wasn't from a boss fight. I think I crafted it um, after the Brimstone Elemental. And this is post-Leviathan, so this is definitely better. Keen Atlantis. It's a magic weapon. That's pretty cool. I actually really like this. Goes through blocks too. Then the annoying Leviathan. Dude, that's really cool too. Honestly, I think if I ever do another Calamity series, which I most definitely will, I am definitely going either Ranger or Mage. There's just so many really cool Ranger and Mage weapons that I've gotten from boss fights. Like, if I could use this as my main weapon, I'd be very happy. And even this, this is pretty cool. I don't know if I would use this over some of the other weapons I got, but it's still really good. Alright, um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next, so um, I guess we'll just have to see. So according to boss checklist, the next boss I have to defeat is Astrum Aureus. So how do I actually summon him in? Okay, so I craft this Astral Chunk with 15 Stardust, I have that, and 10 Fallen Stars. Super easy. So I think the final thing we're going to do in this episode is try out Astrum Aureus and see if I can defeat him. Okay, so I did make this pretty nice little arena here in the Astral Infection biome. Now it does have to be in the Astral Infection biome to actually summon Astrum Aureus, so keep that in mind if you have your own playthrough going. Now, I'm actually going to lower the volume 
of my game, just because Ashram Aureus is a very loud boss. So yeah, I do have the candles here, and I think I'm ready. Let's buff up. Summon in more minions. How many do I have? Four. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything else. Let's just uh, get right into it. Of course, I have to turn at nighttime. Alright, he landed right on me when he spawned. His rage right away. Because Astrum Aureus isn't a very mobile boss. So he's very easy to hit. Kind of like Leviathan. Alright, it's about half HP. We're doing pretty well. Something that I didn't tell you is I actually tried this two times before, and I got absolutely obliterated, so... This is definitely a breath of fresh air to be doing, you know, decent at this boss. Yeah, that was kind of a bad heal. I didn't need to use a health potion there. I think this boss is just very reliant on an arena, because the one thing, like the one difference between this fight and the last two that I did is the arena. Let's see, the first time I didn't even have an arena, I got destroyed. The second time I only had just a small area carved out in the infection biome. And now I have an actual, you know, sophisticated arena going, so. This boss is definitely reliant on the arena. Alright, only about 10,000 HP left on um, Astromorius, which is great. Let's go. Okay. Collect all the loot. Let's actually read that stuff in chat. What's it saying? Astromorius has been defeated. The astral enemies have been empowered. A faint e ethereal click can be heard from the dungeon. That's not good. Astromorius is no longer after you. Okay. I'm very happy that I defeat this boss because I really did think this was going to be another brimstone elemental, you know, situation where I just keep repeatedly losing. But anyways, let's look at the loot. Okay, so we'll start out with the lore as always. Astrum Aureus. Let's actually move it so I can better see. A titanic cyborg infected by a starborn disease expelled from the belly of an ancient god. The destruction of this creature will not prevent the spread of this disease. Favor this item to gain 10% increased jump speed in space. I don't know why I would ever need 10% increased jump speed in space, but uh, maybe we'll find out, who knows. I got all of the ammo that I always get. Let's open this treasure bag. Boom. Stardust. We got Starlight Fuel Cell, consumable. Permanently increases adrenaline mode damage by 15% and damage reduction by 5%. My gosh, I'm very happy to have that. I've been actually waiting for an increase in adrenaline damage for a while now. The Gravistar Sebation. Tap down, it's equipable. Tap the down key to increase your fall speed for 5 seconds. This has an 8 second cooldown. Striking the ground will, with increased fall speed will cause an astral explosion. Now this would be good if it didn't require an accessory spot, but it does, so not even going to touch that. Alula Australis. Don't even know what this is, but it's a mage weapon. It's actually pretty good. Like, I don't think I would use this just because of how erratic it is, but it's pretty cool. Aurora Blazer. I'm very bad at pronouncing things if you uh, couldn't tell. Fallen Stars. That's a lot of Fallen Stars, actually. Aurora Cell. Restores 200 mana. Consumable material grants increased mana regeneration and magic power. Six minute duration. That would be good, but I'm not a mage, so let's actually see in the um, boss log if there's any rogue weapons I can get from this. There's this thing. 89 rogue damage launches a star that splits after a short period of time. Split stars home in on nearby enemies after a few seconds. 
that could be good. I'll have to do research and see if that's worth getting. Then there's this thing. Uh, very fast speed, 224 rogue damage. It's a legendary drop. There is a bombshell that explodes, summoning a meteor to impact the site. Hmm. That might be good. I'm not sure. I'll have to do research on that too. Hollow key. And nebulish. It's a melee weapon, so I don't really need that. Actually, I wonder if there's any like new weapons in the dungeon chest. Because I do have, I think, the corruption key and the jungle key. I'll have to find out because if there's any new weapons in there then I'm definitely going to want to get that. But I have a weird feeling that it's going to be just the vanilla chest that it usually is so I don't know we'll have to find out later. Anyways I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next Calamity video. Bye everyone!